Okay, I think we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today, our, welcome to today, welcome <laughs> to today's Facebook Live on Cloth Diapers for Beginners. If you're new here, my name's April Duffy. I am the owner of Cloth Diapers for Beginners and the one who you've seen on all of the videos in this channel. Anyway, that was awkward. Um, so today we're doing a deep dive into choosing a cloth diaper detergent. This is, you know, one of those points of crazy confusion, conflicting advice, of course. Um, just, you know, it's really hard to wade through all of the stuff for picking a cloth diaper detergent. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> so this is live. If you're watching the replay, um, Thank you for coming and watching, but right now we are live and I'm doing a little mini presentation and I get to see everyone who's talking to me. And after this is over, we're going to do a Q&A session. So yeah, you can go ahead and answer, ask your questions now, um, but I won't get to them until um, at the end, but say hey, and I'll say hey <laughs> if I can, if I can concentrate on a lot of things. <laughs> um, it's so great to have people in the community like Jessica pop in and then join us. So, okay. I tend to ramble. I will try not to ramble today. Um, I already have the presentation up. Here is the presentation. Cloth diaper detergents, a complete guide. Let's get into it. Okay. Oh, let me get this little guy out of the way. Can you see that little guy? No, you can't. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So, oh yes, quick announcement. Um, next Friday, the, normally I do a live on, on YouTube one week and then on Facebook the next week and then I try to switch. Next Friday, I am trying to get um, a special guest. So it's going to be an interview, which is going to be the coolest thing ever. Um, I can't reveal who it is now, but it will be a person from a cloth paper brand. So very, very exciting. It's not 100% yet, but I'm letting you know the date because that's, you know, what we're working at right now. Um, it will definitely be happening the next time that I go live on the Facebook page. So hopefully that will be on Friday, November 5th at 1 p.m., Stay tuned for details. If you're not part of the Cloth Diapers for Facebook, Cloth Diapers for Beginners Facebook group, um, there's the link in the description. You can see it on your screen right now. Come join us. There's like over 37,000 members now. We're Cloth Diaper newbies and Cloth Diaper experienced folks answering questions. It's just a wonderful community and we keep it really positive. So yeah, come join us. And then the next live, I'm going to have a special guest. It's going to be fantastic. All right. Moving on. <laughs> so what we're going to cover today, and I'm going to try not to ramble on, I am very rambly, I realize this, um, is detergents. So what detergents and washing products to stay away from, what ingredients your detergent can't have, what ingredients it should have. I'm going to give you a quick note about HE washers, and then um, we're going to go over, like I said, there's a lot of conflicting advice and just bad advice and stuff, and we're going to go over a couple of the more pervasive rules around choosing cloth diaper detergent, and I'm going to break them here for you so you can get them out of your head and stop worrying about the silliness. There's very few rules that you have to follow. In fact, yeah. We'll get to it. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to pick a good um, detergent in five minutes or less at your local store. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to try to be quick. Can I just, this is that, hi, hi, I'm going to pronounce your name wrong. I'm so bad at pronunciation. Dagen, Dag, Dagen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I butchered it. I'm, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Terrible. All right. This is exactly what I needed. I've been trying to decide what to do for detergent. This live is for you. I'm so excited. I know a lot of people have a hard time with it, especially with all the crazy rules that people make up. All right, so we'll start with what detergent products you should not use. And this is gonna disappoint a lot of folks. It disappointed me. Trust me, if I could find a DIY natural lovely solution, I'd be on it like crazy, but unfortunately, as we'll get into right now, it doesn't work. So homemade and DIY detergents, soaps and um, the cloth diaper soaps especially, and I'm gonna hit on um, Charlie's soap. It's a little bit of a special case, but it is also included in that, um, and soap nuts. So, and sorry, what I wanted to say before I got distracted by the comment is if you guys can hear me, if you wanna just let me know if you can hear me or if you can't hear me, although if you can't hear me, I'm sure I'd hear something by now. Be like, I can't hear you. Anyway, okay, homemade and DIY detergents. 
So, yes. So DIY detergents and commercial soaps are often made from a few standard ingredients that you'll find in the recipes. So some kind of combination of water softener, which would be borax, washing soda, um, or Calgon. Um, and then a soap. So they'll either tell you to grate a bar of soap, melt one down, use Castile soap, some sort of soap. And then they might add in some OxyClean or some essential oils for scents or baking soda, all kinds of other stuff to make you think like you're making a detergent. But really, those things don't offer anything really other than, you know, an Oxy mold. You can put it in your regular detergent and it will do the same thing. It's just a bit of a brightening thing. Anyway, so that means the only cleansing ingredient in all of these recipes and the commercial ones that you buy, if you look at the ingredients on the back of the package, the only cleansing ingredient is soap. That's it. That's all. A water softener will not cleanse your diapers. OxyClean will not cleanse your diapers. Soap. That's it. Um, they are, and soap and detergent are not the same thing as we'll get into. I have a, the little, I don't know where you are here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right below me, you have the little, um, here, I'll move it down so you can see it better. The little atomic structure. If you want to get really sciencey, if you understand that kind of thing. But anyway, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll go over it in layman's terms because I'm diving deep here. I'm diving really deep and I understand I'm probably going to lose a lot of you. That's okay. Stick with me till the end. I'm going to make it simple. I'm going through all of this complicated junk to show you that it actually is simple at the end. Okay. Okay. Bear with me. All right. Uh, where'd I go? I went too far. Um, okay. So, hmm. I think I'm going to reorder this on the fly here. Okay, so soaps versus detergents. A detergent is made, one of the main ingredients in detergent and the most important ingredient is a surfacant. So a surface act activating agent, I think. Surfacant is the short form. Um, these are made synthetically from either petrochemicals or they can use natural sources to like plant oils to synthetically make surfacants. They're specially formulated to trap soil and keep it in the water versus letting it redeposit back on the fabric. So it, that allows it to get easily rinsed away by not a lot of water. This is why you can't make a detergent at home. It's synthetically made in a lab with a bunch of stuff that none of us have. So that's why we can't make a true detergent. Moving on. <laughs> uh, I'll move my slide here again. Um, soap technically has surfacants too, but they work differently. So rather, okay, a, deter a detergent surfacant will have, it's kind of like a, a long thing and it has two ends. One attaches to the dirt, the other attaches to the water and it will kind of lift it and float it away. Soap on the other hand kind of envelops the dirt and makes it kind of like a little soap bubble. And it doesn't, it, it needs a lot more water to get it off of the fabric. So that is the problem because our modern washing machines don't use a lot of water, don't use a lot of um, energy. So there's not as much agitation as there was when your great grandma was there at the scrubbing board, scrubbing away with her soap. It was completely different than these modern washing machines that use very little water. That's why modern detergents are formulated so that they lift it and take it away with the water. You don't need as much water. Soap encapsulates and needs a lot of water and agitation to get it off that you just don't get in a modern washing machine. So what happens? It makes kind of this dirt layer on top of the fabric that doesn't have enough water to get washed away. Even worse, that soap is interacting with, especially if you have hard, this is if you have hard water, it's interacting with the, the magnesium and what's the other one there? Make, hard water is magnesium and drawing a complete blank. There's two minerals. I'll remember it. <laughs> anyway, there's two minerals in hard water and it interacts with those to form a soap scum, which you saw uh, here from the chemistry website. Anyhow, so twofold, you have, you know, the dirt not being able to be washed away by enough water and then it's forming a soap scum that is also layering on top of the diapers. So, you know, as you keep using soap, you keep getting this dirty, scummy bacteria layer that's building up and building up and eventually you will have a smelly diaper, you will have a 
if it goes on long enough, you will have a repelling diaper, but usually you'll smell it long before then, and you might have baby rashes. So that's why we can't use soap. We just don't have enough water and enough agitation in our modern washing machines. That's why detergents are made with these special synthetic surfacants to help take it away. I hope that I'm hope I'm explaining things clearly. If I'm not, I'll show you at the end. I do have articles where I like go through and have all the sources and stuff like that. So bear with me. We'll get through it. <laughs> um, I hear you. Thank you, Amanda. I'm wondering about Tide Original versus Tide Oxy. The specific one Tide is now recommending on its website. Both are fine. I'll get into it in a minute. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Then there's the special case of Charlie's soap. Charlie's soap markets itself as a soap specifically formulated for cloth diapers. So soap, that tells us right away that it's no good. But then if you look at the back of the package, it actually has some surfacants. So you're wondering what the heck is going on here? So yes, it's soap, but, but, <laughs> um, and here's the, the, the little couching I'm going to give because I don't want to get any lawyer papers or anything. <laughs> um, I don't recommend Charlie's soap because of the things that I've seen and the research I have done journalistically. Take that as you will. Here's why. Okay, so Charlie soap, woo, woo, woo. Okay, sorry. Charlie soap has like four ingredients. Sodium carbonate, so that is our washing soda. That's a water softener. Um, alcohol electro, bleh, that. Um, sodium mysticulate and, oh yes, Paris 9. Okay, so I think I had, uh, I thought I had the definition of all the ingredients. Doesn't matter, we don't need it. Charlie soap has been known in the community to cause red bums, bad rashes, irritation. And here is what I have found to be the probable cause. Um, according to the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, on intact and abraded skin, sodium mysticulate, which again, I have it highlighted um, in the ingredients for Charlie's soap, um, 37% in a detergent with sodium carbonate, again, that washing soda, that is again, the first ingredient in Charlie's soap, in a severe, was a severe irritant in, in modified soap chamber test, sodium, blah, 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 had no, okay, good. Okay, so anyways, they're saying that in this combination, it's a skin irritant. Then, um, do I have it here? No, okay. Um, e according to HERA, the Human Environmental Risk Assessment on Ingredients of European Household Cleaning Products, they say that undiluted AEs, which is the alcohol ethro blah, blah, blah. Now, these are the surfacants, okay? Just to tie everything together, the alcohol ethro blah and the sodium mysticulate, these, these are the surfacants. But, so we know that, that the last surfacant highlighted there plus sodium carbonate put together, you get a skin irritant. Now the um, Hera is also saying that undiluted AEs can cause dermal or eye irritation. Usually not a concern because of the dilution in most detergents, but again, Charlie's only has four ingredients. So there's not that dilution there. So you have one complete irritant that if it's not diluted, and then you have one combination that creates an irritant. So it's no wonder that Charlie's soap is causing so many rashes and irritated bums. Yes, it technically has surfacants. No, it's not a soap like it claims on the bottle. But my personal recommendation is not to use it based on what I've seen and what I found in my research. So there, that's the, that's my saying on Charlie's soap. Um, I'll have resources and everything down below, of course, after. Moving on. So we've talked about the difference between soap, surfacants, and detergents. Soap is not really surfacants, but it is anyway. Um, moving on. Again, with the normal soaps claiming to be detergents. Putting Charlie's aside, um, if we look at most of our other DIY soaps or the commercially, the ones who will commercially label themselves soaps properly. Um, so again, they're made of water softeners, soap, and other useless things. The only cleaning ingredient is soap. Soap does not work in um, modern washing machines. And I know why I'm repeating this is because I changed my thing. But anyway, so again, without enough water and agitation, soap creates a film when mixed with dirt, just left on the diapers, yada, yada, yada. I talk again about the hard water. In soft water, I talked about how in hard water, soap will create a, like a soap scum film. 
So you might be thinking, oh, well, I have soft water. It might actually work. Actually, most of the DIY recipes and most of the commercial soaps, again, have all those water softeners in it. So what a water softener does is it, it increases the lather and the bubbling action of your soap. <laughs> we'll talk about later why you need an HE detergent for an HE washing machine. But the whole reason is modern washing machines, again, because they can't use all that water, they can't rinse away all those suds. So if you start adding more and more and more suds, you're increasing the amount of leftover soap that's going to be there to build up on your diapers and in your washing machine. So you're not out of the clear if you have so soft water because of all those water softeners that you're dumping in with the soap. So that's why even the best soaps are absolute cloth diapering nightmares. Do not use DIY soap. Do not use commercial soap. Don't use soap on your diapers. Ugh. <laughs> all right, moving along. Soap nuts. These are, these are different. So soap nuts are neither detergent nor soap. They're something completely different. And I was very optimistic when I first heard of soap nuts. I was super excited. And then I started to do the research. And of course, as I would, it's me, so I take forever to do the research. As I was going through the whole research process, I would see the moms in the cloth diaper community slowly fall out of love with them when they, you know, started to get the smell, starting to get the, the rashes and everything. And then they'd be like, hmm, something's up. Maybe I need some water softeners. I'll throw some water softeners in there. Hmm, that's not working. Hmm, let me do a strip because I have these smells and now I have a rash. Let me do a strip. Oh wait, here's this disgusting water. These soap nuts were not getting my diapers clean at all. Here's why. <laughs> soap nuts, sometimes called eco nuts, are actually dried shells of the soap berry nut, but they're so they're not they're the soap berry, I put soap berry nut, but soap berry. They're not nuts, they're berries. Um, so they are hypoallergenic um, from the tree that you can <laughs> see on the slide there. They work by releasing sapopin when the water is absorbed by the shell and they get agitated. That's why sometimes you'll hear people boiling them to make the a concentrated sapopin liquid. Um, they're sometimes referred to as, I am so bad at pronouncing, as you've seen, triterpene glossier, that on the slide. <laughs> they're sometimes referred to that and they're bitter tasting toxic plant chemicals that have a sudsy soapy, qual soapy quality when agitated in water. So the sap of it produces, produces is neither a soap or detergent. It is sometimes called a surfacant, but it is not. Um, Sapopins are naturally occurring plant compounds that are known to work as surfacants, but their properties as foam and emulsion stablers are not well understood. And I have source there, but that's from the actual article that again, I have a link to down below. Um, what's now understood is that in order to work a surfacant, um, to order to work as a surfacant, they, the liquid created from the sapomint needs to be heated up and it works best at 90 degrees Celsius. The problem is 90 degrees Celsius is right around where you get into the sanitize cycle in your washing machine. You know, our normal hot cycle is around 50 to 60 degrees. That's what we recommend. Once you get to 90 degrees or around there, you're, you're in your sanitize cycle and you're gonna do a whole lot of damage to the plastic parts of your diaper. So the Velcro, the snaps, the PUL, the microfiber inserts, the bamboo charcoal inserts, you know, all the synthetic plasticky stuff, it's too hot, it's going to do damage, it's going to slowly like degrade it and melt it and all that stuff. So we can't use it at 90 degrees Celsius. Whew. It's warm in here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so yeah, what if we were able to use them at 90 degrees Celsius? What if we're using them on all cotton diapers, we have no plastic anywhere to be seen, we can use the sanitized cycle? How about that? Well, I mean, they've done a bunch of studies and they're still, they come out as no better than washing your clothes in water. So the Choice uh, website that, you know, tests a lot of different cleaning ingredients and that said that they tested them in both. They tested them in a front and a top loading and found that they were no more effective than washing your clothing in plain water. The website review of soap nuts gave them an overall score of 42%. Um, another 2013 study found that soap nuts as well as soap wort and two kinds of washing balls showed didn't show a significant difference in cleaning performance compared to treatment in pure water. The study used both 30 degrees and 60 degrees tests. So again, they didn't test in the super hot conditions that um, other things had tried, other studies, things, other studies had um, found that they work better, but there you go. 
Um, again, links to um, this, the article I have on Soap Nuts that has links to all of these studies and a whole bunch of stuff in there is in the description already. All right. Whew. I'm hot and I'm talking too fast. <sighs> it's not menopause or nothing, right? I'm not that old. Jeez. Okay, so that was the longest part of this presentation. We're moving along. I swear it's going to get much less intense. <laughs> <laughs> so we've looked at detergents and washing or detergents and washing products to stay away from um, what ingredients you must have so surfacants and we're gonna talk about now what um, ingredients because what does that leave that leaves us with commercial detergents right we can't use DIY and homemade um, soaps we can't use commercial soaps we can't use soap nuts really all that's left is a commercial detergent and what I mean when I say commercial I don't mean like a detergent for a commercial washing machine I mean a detergent that you can find in retail right so you go to Walmart and you can pick up detergent there that's what I mean when I say commercial so that leaves us with commercial detergent so let's talk about when you're going to find a commercial detergent and there are lots of natural detergents out there that work very well there's lots of plant-based detergents that work very well so don't think that just because you can't use a DIY homemade thing you can't get more natural than Tide okay so don't freak out there free and clear detergents there's lots of options okay bear with me so what can't we have in our detergent there's only one thing wait there's only one thing <laughs> i should have jumped ahead these slides are tripping me up today fabric softeners the one thing you have to avoid are fabric softeners so fabric softeners are a big thing in cloth diapering you can't use them in your detergent and you also can't use them in the form of dryer sheets and you know actual liquid fabric softeners as well what the reason why is the whole way that they work is coating the fabric they are able to coat the fabric without being lifted off by the detergents so that you know it keeps the fabric soft and pliable and static free and all of that goodness <laughs> so but the problem with that is you're coating the fibers of your diaper and you're adding it layers and layers and layers of this oily coating that sure they're soft but eventually over time the diaper won't be able to absorb anything through that coating and What's a diaper supposed to do but absorb liquid and other things? So it needs to absorb. If it stops absorbing, it stops working and it's no good anymore. So stay away from fabric softeners. That's the one thing. Luckily, fabric softeners are expensive. So they will always advertise when there is a fabric softener in the detergent. You do not have to look at the ingredients list to find it. It's usually on the outside. It'll say made with fabric softener, made with downy, made with snuggle, stuff like that. Or you can also find it in baby detergents. And that's why baby detergents are a little bit of, they're a little bit more difficult because, well, they also have a ton of scents in them, which scents are fine. I'm not saying stay away from scents. Scents are fine. Scent, scent yourself crazy. But once you get into the, you know, baby scented detergents, they start getting baby soft. And as soon as you see baby soft or soft to baby's touch or anything like that on the detergent bottle, that's probably fabric softener. So if you really want to use that, then you will need to look at the ingredients list just to make sure, but it's probably fabric softener. That's what, that's how they're marketing it as baby soft. So stay away from anything with fabric softener on the label. Also, I said I was going to give you a quick note about HE detergent. So when we were talking about soap earlier, we were talking about how, you know, if you have a bunch of fat, uh, water softener and soap, it makes a lot of bubbles and your washing machine isn't able to wash it away. This is especially true with HE washing machines that use the least amount of water possible. So that's why they make HE detergent because HE detergent will not foam the way that regular detergent will. It won't bubble and give you lots of suds. That's also why people get paranoid that they're not using enough and dump in way too much. But that's something else. <laughs> Just know that if you have an HE washing machine and you're gonna see that label on your washing machine somewhere or the words high efficiency if you if it's a high efficiency washing machine make sure that when you pick your detergent make sure that it's he it has that little symbol on it easy peasy that's all you have to look for it's going to have that symbol on it most of the detergents nowadays are he a very few aren't but just something to be conscious of since it matters so much in our cloth ever laundry all right, zooming along. We are zooming fast now, aren't we? <laughs> so now I'm just gonna pick apart some of the other group's rules and then I'm gonna tell you how to pick a detergent in five minutes or less. So let's rock on. So myth number one, I need powder 
or I need liquid. It depends, whatever group you are in or, you know, what year it is, things can tend to go back and forth that some groups are saying you need powder, some groups are saying, no, no, you need uh, liquid. Or liquid is better for soft water and powder for, it's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy. They're only trying to compensate for their crappy wash routines. Anyway, <laughs> the truth is <laughs> any amount of, it's not, it's not the type of detergent, it's not powder or liquid that's the problem. It's the amount of detergent you're using in your laundry. You have to measure things. If you're using too much, you're not going to see it as much as you will in a powder that you, then you're not going to see it as much in a liquid than you would as a powder because powder will actually leave like the residue on your clothes. So I think that's why they're always telling people with soft water to use liquid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that's the where that comes from. But it's all about the amount. If you're using too much, you're using too much. It's still going to give you problems either way. It doesn't matter if it's powder or liquid. So here I have a little, go to any cloth diaper manufacturer and go to their website and search powder versus liquid. And they're going to tell you the exact same thing. Um, here's from, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, and I'm switching the thing. <laughs> um, so that's from the Arm & Hammer. So just exactly what I'm saying here. And here's from Tide. So here's what they will tell you that the differences are. Liquid Tide is a great pre-treater. So because it's a liquid, you can kind of pour it on and get it in there and kind of leave it as a great pre-treater, especially for grease stains and that type of thing. Powder um, can also be used as a pre-treatment, but you have to water it down to get it on there because putting a dry powder on your stain won't do anything, right? So you have to water it and then put like a paste on there. Powder, they, Tide says that powder is better for stains like dirt or clay. I'm guessing that has something to do with the fact that it's grainy and it can kind of like get you a little bit of ad abrasion there, but I'm not sure why. And that's it. That's all from true sources. That is the only information you can find on powder versus liquid. <laughs> it, it irks me. It irks me when you're just trying to make up rules that make people go crazy buying 14,000 detergents that they would never use in a million years just because you need to cover your butt. Anyway, moving on. Enzymes. <laughs> Some of the Facebook groups claim that your detergent must have enzymes or else it is worthless. You must throw it away. No, that's no, it's not a thing. There are, okay, there are five classes of enzymes. And here they are proteases, amylases, lipases, cellulases, and looks like mayonnaise is to me. <laughs> but anyhow, that's besides the point. So Proteases are the ones that break down soils like blood, urine, poop, all the biological stuff. So in order for it to be a worthwhile enzyme, it needs to be protease. So let's have a look at Tide. By far, even in those groups, they will tell you Tide is the gold standard. It is what is going to get your di your diapers the cleanest. It's a lot of people don't like the, the harshness of it, but if you're willing to deal with the harshness of it, go with Tide because it's the best. Well, Tide does not have protease. <laughs> it has, where is it? But I tried to show you here. I know it's, it's, it's easier if you go to the website and I'm going to leave, I'm going to put a comment with all the, the smaller links and I'll pin that at the top. Um, but if you go to their ingredients list on their website and go to tide.ca, because I think because of the regulations, the Canadian website is able, has to tell you more than the American website. So you get a lot more answers on the Canadian website. So search for enzyme and the only enzyme you will find is amylase. Amylase is for starch as we saw up here. Did I have that here? Yes. So I don't know if you can see my mouse. Um, so it breaks down starches. So that's what amylase does. So that's why Tide says it's so great on grass stains and that type of thing. Tomato sauce spills, those type of stains, because that those are starch stains. Those are the only enzyme they have. Why don't all these detergents have, I'm going to start pronouncing it wrong, I think protease, because it's expensive. They, they're not going to put it in there if they don't need it. And most of the time you're not washing bodily fluids out of your laundry. So most detergents do not have the enzyme that would actually matter. So stop telling people you need enzymes in your detergent, guys. Gah! <laughs> actually, I say that, that's time. A lot of the detergents, um, like the cheaper detergents, will have the, um, what's the fatty one there? Um, 
lipase so they will mostly have the the greasy ones so that's why i say you don't need um enzymes unless your baby's having bacon poops because that's the most common uh enzyme you'll find in detergents but even tide doesn't have that so okay so i've talked a lot i've probably confused the heck out of you let's we've seen all of that we've seen all of the information it's too much it's a lot how do i pick a detergent and how do i pick one quickly Okay, so step one, go to your store, your local store, your local store and see what is always on the shelf. Make sure that when you pick a detergent, you're picking something that you can always access. That way when you know you run out and you have to run to the store, if it's not there, it's not a big panic emergency. It's not a big thing. Pick something that's readily available, easy to pick up. I know some of you will want something a little bit more fancy. Um, like natural based like bio clean or something and those you normally have to go um, buy online that's fine but make sure you have a source for it that it's always readily available so go there and take a look at what's on the shelf and that you can get all the time or online in your e-shelf <laughs> that you can get all the time pick something up that you know you're comfortable with it fits all of you know the things that you're looking for it could be free and clear it could be plant-based it could be any of that stuff pick it up and have a look Make sure it doesn't have fabric softener on the label. It doesn't say baby soft on the label. Make sure if you have an HE detergent that it says HE on the label. Step one complete. <laughs> step, oh, step two, or sorry, I'm getting confused. Step one, go to your store. Step two, pick up something that you like and has the, doesn't have fabric softener, doesn't have HE symbol. Okay, yes, step three, take a look at the ingredients list. Now the problem, the reason why I can't list a list of surfacants because surfacants are the important thing, remember, they are the synthetic ingredient that helps us get our diapers clean in low water conditions of our washing machine. You need surfacants. The reason I can't give you a list to look for is because every detergent maker makes their own little formulation and labels it something else. A lot of the times you'll see it as some variation of laurel, laurel sulfate or some variation of that, that's the main one that you're going to find, but there are lots of others and they come in all different names for different brands and everything. And even among countries, it can be different. So take a look at the first few ingredients and Google them. You're gonna Google them and it's gonna tell you what that's for and you're gonna see if it's a surfacant. If you see that, you know, the first few ingredients, one of them is a surfacant, you're good. Special note here, if the only surfacant you find in that list is a coconut based one, you might want to check for another one, especially if you have hard water, but don't sweat over that. If it has surfacants, if it has, if you find more than one on there, you're golden, it's good. So you pick it up, no fabric softener, got the HE symbol, flip it over, Google, got a surfacant, good to go. That's it. That's all. That's all you need to look for. You take it to the crash register and you buy it and you use that one and hopefully you like it. <laughs> That's it. You don't have to worry about powder and liquid and enzymes and all of the things and free and clear was no good for a while on the group and it just it goes on and on and on of these silly rules just make sure it has surfacants it doesn't have fabric softeners it's a detergent not a soap and you're good that's it i think i got through it all it's a lot it was a lot of, it's a lot of research to get to that point <laughs> but we got there all right so resources you're going to find in the description right now is if you want to get into a deeper dive of why you can't use DIY detergent because you've been using it and you're wondering what the heck, go check out that article there. Again, if you're using soap nuts and you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, go check out that article. If you want some recommendations about what is a good cloth diaper detergent, if you're looking for natural ones or free and clears and all that kind of stuff, you can hit that link at the bottom. If you're totally overwhelmed with all of this stuff and you're losing your mind and you need a lot of help with the whole washing and care and stuff, I do have the cloth diaper washing care handbook there that you can get. It's pretty cheap, but I'm also giving you a $2 off coupon if you use the coupon code YouTube. So there's, there's what I got for you. Um, and now I'll take questions if anybody has um, some for me. So, um, Jessica was asking earlier, I was wondering about Tide Original versus the Tide Oxy. Oxy, as I was mentioning when we were talking about soaps, it's it's just kind of going to, I mean, it's nice for stains and stuff like that. It doesn't really work on diaper stains as well as sunning your diapers. I know it sounds super, super hokey and I feel like super lame every time I say it, but sunning 
really is the best way to remove those poop stains and everything from your diapers. So you can use the one, anyway, you can use Oxy. It's not going to hurt anything, but it's not needed. It's not necessary. If you're paying for more for it, throw them in the sun. That's, that's where I come from. I'm cheap. <laughs> um, so any good detergent recommendations for soft water? I don't have any softeners added, rinses out well, etc. Doesn't matter how hard, how soft your water is, just go to the grocery store, pick a detergent that looks good to you, make sure it has no fabric softeners, make sure it's HE if you have an HE machine, Google the first few ingredients, if it has a surfacant, you're good, that's it. Don't worry about that hard water, soft water stuff, it does not matter, it's people trying to make up for wash routines that aren't measuring things. It's not that complicated. The detergent part is not the part that you need to worry about. The, the part that you need to worry about is making sure that you're not overstuffing your washing machine and basically that you're not overstuffing your washing machine so that you're giving your washing machine enough room to rinse everything away. And also that you're putting in the right amount of detergent for your load that you're putting in your washing machine. That's where, that's the complicated part. And that's the part that I have, um, you know, in the handbook extensively. And on the website, if you go to clothdiversforbeginners.com and you go how to wash cloth diapers for beginners, I take you through everything there. You don't have to buy the, the handbook. I take you through everything there and give you a worksheet to do. It's the measuring part that's the hard part. It's not picking a detergent. <sighs> um, what are your thoughts on drops laundry pods? No clue. I don't know what they are. I've never seen them. I'd have to see an ingredients list and know what's in them to have an opinion um do you generally agree with i think that's fluff university <laughs> and they have a chart talking about detergents being good or bad i do not recommend fluff love university their detergent index is not the worst it it's not the worst generally if they're going to rec mm, i'm trying to think if they recommend rocking green i think they might I'm not entirely sure. In general, you don't need it. You just don't need some crazy long index of every detergent that, you know, may have the ingredients for your country or it may not, you know, they don't update it. You don't need to go through a big long list. You just need to walk into your store, pick one you like. Does it have fabric softener? No. Is it HE? Yes. Cool. Surficant? Yes. Good to go. That's it. It's going to take you two minutes of Googling. That's it. That's all. You don't have to, you know, scroll through and compare detergents and go crazy. Pick something you like, see if it, it fits those few little things and you're good. You're done. Don't worry about it. Fluff Love University. I have a whole article um, about, I won't go find it now, but if you go to clothdiversforbeginners.com and go to what's the problem with Fluff Love University, you'll see that they recommend way, 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 way too much detergent for people. Like there's too much detergent and then there's Fluff Love University, right? Like they're just like off the charts crazy. And if you tell them that you have detergent build off, they will remove you from their group and it's just, it's nutty. Like it's weird. Don't use Fluff Love University if you can and you don't need a giant chart of detergents. That's my advice. It's just, you don't need it. Generally, their recommendations are okay as long as you're not looking at a soap. I'm pretty sure that they say that free and clear detergents are no good, but you know, go to our Facebook group. Lots of people are using free and clear detergents and there's no research or reason for them not to work. Anyway, I could go on and on and on about how difficult these other groups make it. It's not that difficult. Is there any other questions? It doesn't have to be detergent related. You guys can ask me anything. If you're having trouble with like your inserts or rashes or anything, just ask away. It doesn't have to be about detergents. I can give you a few more minutes if you have questions. Ooh, I don't know why I'm so hot. <laughs> Thank you, it had me so confused. Yes, yes. And you know what, when I first started the website, so I started cloth diapering my, my daughter in 2015. So I've been, and I knew at that point that I wanted to make cloth diapers for beginners because I couldn't find any answers either, right? Like I was even worse. So I had it in my mind that I was going to make this, this website and this resource. 
so, but of course I didn't do it for years, but I was looking at Fluff Love University. I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. They're so sciencey and you know, they've done so much research and that's, that's actually how my research started. I tried to build something kind of like that, but I wanted to make it simpler. But then I quickly found out that it's pointless because all of the, it doesn't matter. It just, it's silly. Yeah. So I, I, I admire the work that they've put in. <laughs> but you don't need it and it makes things way too complicated. And also a lot of it's wrong. I hate, I hate bashing the other people like that, but it just, it gets, it gets to you after a while of just them making it so difficult. <sighs> How many people do we have here? Oh, just a few of you. So maybe there aren't going to be many questions, but that's okay. I had fun. Oh my gosh, look at me. I'm burning up. I think it's because I have a new light because my other light died. I think it's putting a lot of heat in my fingers. <laughs> I'm like dying. All right. So I'm going to cut it short there because apparently I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> All right. I hope that was helpful. If you do have any questions, of course, ask them below or join us in the group. Um, again, next week we're going to have that special guest. So that's something to look for. I'm hoping it's next Friday. It should be next Friday at 1 p.m. Fingers crossed it will stay that way and I will see you there because that would be exciting and you can ask questions. You can ask questions of me and my guest and it will be fabulous. One last question. Why does it require more detergent for HE machines? It doesn't require more detergent for HE machines. Don't they use less water? Yes, they do use less water. Example, if you look on the back of the detergent, usually HE machines require more detergent. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It doesn't. That's that's them really mislabeling their large load. So when you look on the back of the detergent, when you if you do if you do one of a measured method routine, I have a work shirt work shirt. No, I don't have any work shirts. I have a worksheet for you <laughs> there that you can fill out. And no matter what it says on the back of the bottle, don't pay attention to their labeling. It's they like to make you okay. Here we go. <laughs> So on the back of Tide, for example, they have their medium load is a line one. Their large load is a line three. Their HE extra large load is a, a line five. Dude, for, for HE machines, <laughs> so their, their medium load is for, in HE machines, for six pounds of laundry. Their medium load is for 11 pounds and their HE extra large load is for 21 pounds. An, a huge home washing machine is at best six cubic feet, which for an extra large load, you know, the largest load that you can put in that machine, that's like what, six times, whew, sorry, is eight, six times three is 18. So it's 18 pounds. So even in the largest machine that you have at home, you cannot put enough laundry for you to need the extra large load and no HE machines do not need more detergent because yes, they use less water. They need the amount that you think that they need that your washing machine is built for, which is roughly your small load is one times the amount of your cubic foot washing machine. So say you have a four foot cubic, a four cubic foot washing machine, your small load would be a, a four pounds and your medium load would be eight pounds and your large load would be 12 pounds which again, a lot less than the 25 pounds on the back of the bottle. They want to sell detergent. They want you to use a lot of detergent. So yeah, you don't need more detergent. Did you, did I, I rambled a lot. I hope I explained that well. Go to clothdiapersforgeaters.com. Go to how to wash cloth diapers for beginners. Get the, get the, the cheat sheets. They're the, the worksheet and go through the post as you're filling it out because if you try to fill it out all at once without reading the post you're going to blow your mind and it's going to be way too much go through and it'll it'll explain a lot uh, amanda says thank you over the past few days i've devoured your work and i'm finally diving into cloth diapers for my baby number six baby number six oh my god you're a brave mom <laughs> coming in a few weeks you have given me confidence and information thank you so much amanda that's that really like stuff like that makes my day. Thank you very much for saying that. It's very sweet of you. Congratulations on baby number six. You are a rock. You are, you're my hero, man. I couldn't, I couldn't do it, but that's awesome that you can. And congratulations. Oh, the amount of love. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> 
All right, well, if that's all, how many? Okay, we're still at a low number. So if that's all for today, I will say goodbye because I'm still having my hot flash from that light. I need to get a new light. Hooey. <laughs> I will see you all next time and try to drop by the Cloth Diapers for Beginner's Facebook group to catch next week's live presentation with my guest. I just keep saying the same things over and over again. So instead, I will say goodbye. Thank you guys so much.